everyone. This is Outnumbered. I'm Emily Campagno here with my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany. And also joining us today, Lily Gil Valletta. It is her first time here on Outnumbered. Welcome to Thank you. We're you. so happy you're here. And also with us today, Todd Pyro. Yeah, they almost forgot you, brother. They way too pretty up there. They almost forgot you. They was they almost they was only naming all the ladies who look so good. Shout out to Emily Campagno. Now, another bus filled with migrants from Texas has just pulled into New York City today. It's a scene playing out now in other sanctuary cities across the country. Mm. But Chicago's mayor is now facing fierce backlash and charges of hypocrisy over her move to divert some of those illegal immigrants to a Republican-run suburb. Meantime, border czar Kamala Harris seems to be trying to gaslight the nation because she insists, oh, the border is secure and blames any problems on the Trump administration. Watch. Would you call the border secure? The border is secure, but we also have a broken immigration system, in particular over the last four years before we came in, and it needs to be fixed. We're going to have two million people cross this border for the first time ever. You're confident this border is secure? We have a secure border in that that is a priority for any nation, including ours and our administration. But there are still a lot of problems that we are trying to fix. I want to like, I, I want it. I wanted to say, I want it to like Kamala. And yes, 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 yes. It's only because she's, she's a colored woman. <laughs> Listen to me, man. It's not my fault. That's what CNN and MSNBC teach you. And I see, I don't even watch, I don't even watch the news, but I know that the gentleman that she's talking to is, uh, his name is Chuck Todd. I know that much. See, see, I'm learning some things, but I always wanted Kamala to, 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 to work. She's not very impressive. I'm sorry. She's not. She's not. Um, and, but she's, I mean, she's accomplished. That's why she's VP, but she's not very impressive at all. It's like, she don't answer any questions directly. She, she tells stories that make absolutely no sense. Make it seem like she's lost in the sauce. You know what I mean? It's not impressive at all. Given the deterioration that happened over the last four years. And she can't continue to blame the Trump administration, but yet Bruh, y'all are almost three years in. When are y'all gonna take some responsibility for something? The answer is never, because the way she's trying to paint it is simply so that they can be voted for again. Be honest. Like if I was in her position, I would be super honest, probably be pissing my dang on president off because I'm so honest. You know what I mean? Be honest. That's how you get, that's how you get the trust of the people. That's what you need right now. You need the trust of the people, but if you're continually lying, you're not going to get that. You're, you're not. Just try it. Hopefully someone sends this to, to Kamala Harris so that she can see this. Just this little snippet, this little piece. I hope this part lands in her lap, on her phone, something, because if it, it's not going to be in her algorithm if she doesn't watch Fox News. If she only watches things that praise her constantly, this right here is not going to land in her lap, but I hope it does because sometimes we need to see ourselves. Sometimes the mirror is not enough because we, we don't see ourselves. We lie to ourselves unless she just see herself and she cry about it. And she, she's fine with the dollars and cents that she's making in her bank account. But other than that, you're, you're not effectively making any change. Kaylee, what a tired talking point. What an old, resurrected talking point from her. They have been in office almost two years now, and she's still blaming the Trump administration. She's still talking about the broken system that she has done nothing to fix. And what a total insult to the American citizen. This is like, I mean, saying the border secure, as she just did, it's like being in the middle of a Category 5 hurricane. The wind is whipping around you. The rain is coming on your face. The sky is pitch black. But you say, Kamala Harris, it's sunny out. OK, we know it's not sunny out. We know we're in the middle of a raging hurricane. Ask yourself, does this sound secure to you when you have two million encounters on the southern border in this fiscal year? That is two times the last administration when fentanyl pouring across the southern border. In fact, that Wall Street Journal explosive piece we went through two weeks ago, how two Mexican drug cartels came to dominate America's fentanyl supply. It's coming from Mexico, migrant deaths. There were 685 migrant deaths this year. That is double, once again, 
the last administration, not to mention the terror watch list, where we have nearly 60 people who have crossed and who are on the terror watch list. Does this sound secure to you? Now, the fact that Ky uh, Kylie McEnany is presenting this information, it, it kind of pisses me off that she's presenting this these facts. She's presenting some facts right here. But the people on the left, the people who support the left, they are never going to hear this information, ever, unless we share these videos. I'm not trying to, well, I would love to blow up on YouTube. You know what I mean? I would love to do well. I would love to be super successful. But this is not about me. It's about the people who are not ever going to see this. Until you guys understand algorithm, fully understand algorithm. If they're not con if they're not clicking, going out of their way to click on Fox News videos, they aren't going to see this. They're going to believe every single word that comes out of Kamala Harris's mouth, not understanding that the fentanyl problem is theirs. If she constantly say, "Well, the fentanyl problem is only happening because of the Trump," come on. That's, that's what people on the left will eat up. They're already not very active in trying to figure out what's actually happening. I'm talking, well, the leaders in the communities are because they're trying to, well, no, nah, they, still, they still only lock into to stuff that make them feel good too. Because when you're a leader on the left, you want to watch stuff that make the left look, look good. And if anyone presents a point opposite of yours, you're so busy trying to find uh, talking points that go against what was opposite of your original views so that you can not feel dumb for supporting the wrong side. People are so busy playing this political game that it makes, once I see stuff like this and I hear how people are operating off of absolutely no integrity whatsoever, it make me not even want to be a part of anything dealing with politics, man. But the flip side is it let me know how many people are actually lying and it make me want to do my own due diligence. Hopefully it does that to people too. We got to share these videos. I do not think so. We are in a hurricane right now. It is not sunny out and the American voter will have their die to cast in November on this issue. And Harris, we've talked so much as well about that hurricane that is absolutely destroying all of those towns in Texas and Arizona and along the border, including other communities. Look. We had El Paso mayor on earlier. He was saying, yeah. look, he said, we're getting a thousand, to your point, up to 1,400 migrants a day, he says. They're sleeping on the streets. He says, we simply don't make, we simply don't have the space. And then juxtapose that with the Burr Ridge mayor in that Republican-led suburb outside of Chicago, and he says, so the city of Chicago says it's going to be a sanctuary city, and he says there must be vacant hotel rooms there. That's hundreds of people in a city of millions, the mayor says. Why are they sending them out to my suburb? You have to wonder. Not just sending them to the suburbs, but doing what Democrats have done surreptitiously all along, and that is putting them on night flights. Remember when they were yes. doing that in yes. other cities? And I, I was on the air with Senator Blackburn one day, and she said people are showing up on the tarmac at night. And then we got the video. I mean, this has been a short-lived administration. It's, it hasn't been four years and all of this is happening. But when you talk about the El Paso mayor, let's talk about El Paso is a predominantly Democrat-led city. They are sending buses of people to New York City now. How are they even going to def and DC. defend going against their own party? They know they have to because the feds won't give them the money they need, which, by the way, is our money. And the American public has already said, we don't want it on our conscience that people are getting hurt. You got to, and dying to get here. You got to figure this out. Today, Bill Malushin, though, went a step further. Because I can't wait to talk to one of those Democrats down in El Paso. And I'm sure, I'm absolutely certain. I love the way these ladies look on this show, man. It, it represents what ladies are supposed to look like. I'm not being a perv or nothing like that. I'm, I'm happily married, man. I'm fine. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I ain't trying to do nothing nasty to any of these ladies. As much as I talk about Emily Campagno, I don't want none. I don't want no parts of that. But at the end of the day, the way that they represent is beautiful. It's beautiful. It's something that young ladies should watch. This is something that young ladies should watch right here. It shows you how a lady supposed to present herself.
and then the young gentleman sitting in the middle. It shows you how how a, 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 a gentleman is supposed to present himself. You know what I mean? It's I don't know if I'm explaining it properly, but I like this. That Henry Cuellar, a blue dog Democrat in the state of Texas, probably has a few things fresh to say, too. But the Venezuelan flag planted. Did you hear about that mm. with Bill Malusian as people were coming across, you know, through that fence area? And I said, well, what does that mean when they do that on our soil? He said, Harris, I don't know. I, I, I'm, wow. I'm going to go chase that down. We are a sovereign nation. We should act like one so people don't get it confused. I wish the vice president had an iota of the strength and articulation that you do, Harris. You are because so if kind. she would just she say took something my like name. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was hers first. She's old. And so, Todd, <laughs> we've been nice talking too. about the depletion of resources, right? Yeah. Harris just laid it out perfectly. Kaylee did as well. Um, and yet, the Chicago mayor has the nerve to call into question the faith of some of those Texas leaders. Let's take a watch. He professes to be a Christian. This is not the Christianity and the teachings of the Bible that I know. And I think religious leaders all across the country are standing up and denouncing exactly this. So what is the difference between what she is doing, sending these migrants from her city, which has the capacity to handle them, mind you, it is a city with millions upon millions of people, to this tiny, tiny enclave in Illinois that has a few hotels? Literally, she is calling someone unchristian and doing that exact same act. First of all, it's not unchristian. You're trying to find the best place for these individuals, and you're trying to prove a point. So let's eliminate this lack of Christianity thing. Mm -hmm. But second, your interview, your entire 11 a.m. hour, I'm doing a pitch for your entire show. It needs to be required <laughs> viewing for anybody running for office on the Republican side, federal, state, and local. The points that were brought out, specifically with regard to El Paso, shows that the Democrats are so hypocritical on this entire thing. They, they do are. not have a leg to stand on. If they did, they would be as vociferous with regard to El Paso. They would be as vociferous with That's regard to point. what Lori Lightfoot is doing. Yet Now I got to Google vociferous. vociferous. God dang it. Every single time I watch one of these shows, they start throwing out all these big words that I don't know. Vociferous. Vociferous. And now next time I'm at the barbershop, which I need to go to the barbershop, you see my neck hasn't been lined up in like a month, man. I think I'm going to cut that so that there won't be no, no, you know, that, that ingrown hair and not give me a bump or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm definitely using vociferous and I'm going to use it properly. I'm going to use it correctly when we have an our conversation. I don't care what we talk about. We could be talking about the new Jordans that's coming out. We could be talking about LeBron James. We could be talking about football. Um, Tom Brady, how he put, put his whole foot in Dallas Cowboys hind pots on Sunday. We could be talking about the Washington, Washington Commanders, how they beat up on the Jaguars. Huh? We could be talking about that, but either way, vociferous will be making his way through my vocabulary. Huh? 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 I'm learning something. At crickets, when that happens, Abbott sends people to the interior, to cities that call themselves sanctuary cities, mind you, and all mm. of a sudden, it's up in arms. It's hypocritical. Republicans need to watch your show, re rack it, and get your talking points for the next two months. <laughs> You're going to be my screensaver. I can't believe I used to hate. Fox News. I hate, hate, hate Fox News. And guess what? I never even watched it. <laughs> I never even watched it. I just used to hate that if I came in a room and I saw my wife watching it, I'd be like, why are you watching Fox? Oh, you're a traitor. Look at you. Trying to be a traitor. I see you. <laughs> I'm judging her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because my wife watches everything. She watches everything. She wants to know every single side. She's an anomaly, though. A lot of people don't. A lot of people don't go from this station, see what they're talking about, then this channel, see what they're talking about, then that channel, see what they're talking about, and then that channel, see what they're talking about, and then form their own opinions um, based off of what's reported, and then go online and do their own due diligence. That's my wife. Me? Nope. I wouldn't like that. But I really enjoy them because they are providing value and they look good while doing so. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I'm not even my wife's yes. screensaver. So that's that's well, a beautiful sentiment. I'm grateful. Thank you. Thank you. And Lily, you were just at the border in January. Tell us what you saw. Yeah, well, first of all, I'm an immigrant. 
And it took me 10 years to become a lawful U.S. citizen. So there is a process, it's a long one. And when you watch what's happening, which is the humanitarian crisis, it broke my heart. I saw the children, uh, over 150,000 kids have come to the United States. I did not know she was an immigrant until she started talking. Um, and I can hear, definitely hear, um, um, I can hear it in her tone and everything. So she's beautiful, by the way. On their own. And that is another side of the story that is being aggravated by policies that make it seem as if it's easy to come across the border. So we are actually promoting the cartels, the coyotes, all the money that is funding a lot of the drug issues that we're seeing, because when you remove the Remain in Mexico policy, which was something the Biden administration did right away, oh, let me just overturn what Trump did in, in the migrant protocols, and all of a sudden that sends the message that it's okay to come, claim asylum, and you remain in the U.S., with no tracking, therefore promoting this pouring of immigrants. And by yeah. the way, I'm from Colombia. Venezuela is our neighboring country. That flag on American soil is terrifying because it basically describes and celebrates what socialism is, mm. what communism is, and the very reason why we want to celebrate the freedoms of this country. So I'm telling you, it's a humanitarian crisis, laws for politicking purposes that were overturned right away because I just want to do against what Trump established have now backfired. Wow. And to assume that there's wow. no crisis, that means our vice president hasn't been to the border. I have, both in the McAllen side and the Reynosa side, and it mm -hmm. is terrifying. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it's broken. And, yes, easy to say, don't send them to my city when Texas has been paying about $850 million a year for migrants and caring for them. We got to, how about spreading the fair share of caring for that cost if we're talking about equity? That's so, true. yeah, it's been, it, it's a double standard. And it, it just as an immigrant breaks my heart. Lily, that's such yeah. an excellent point when you say fair share. Because that's yeah. part of the, the nomenclature, the, the, the verbal weaponry that's the rhetoric, that, right? that Democrats like to use when it comes to all sorts of things okay. like taxes. And, and why can't you pay your fair share, you group of this person or that? Um, but what you're talking about, being on both sides, seeing both sides, mm -hmm. is really critical. Mm. It is. It is. And, of course, when it's my fair share of upfronting the cause for hosting those migrants, then all of a sudden, you know, maybe yeah. it's selective inclusion in a very uh -huh. funny way. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems like just between us on the couch, we have traveled there more, we have represented yes. more, we have talked about more, oh, we have advocated yeah. for more specificity than our border czar and the vice yeah. president has. Great point. Well, Kennedy calls her a czarina. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow, man. If you don't share this with Democrats, they're not going to see it. This is just a private meeting that's rallying up the troops on the conservative side. And it will end here. Telling you this right now, if you look inside the comments on the original video, which will be in the link below, you, will, you won't see many liberal or leftist comments. You won't at all. Even if you go all the way to the bottom, you might see a few. Just a couple. Other than that, nope, not at all. And also, people who comment in the comment section, do yourselves a favor if you want this message to spread to the other side. Don't be mean to the people who pull up to defend their sides. No, just provide them with some value and they'll thank you for it. They won't feel bad or feel like, feel like you're being demeaning or anything like that. If you're being like upset with them and telling them that they're stupid and that they're following the wrong person and you're being a bully. The way we communicate with people actually matters. It really matters, all right? So when they pull up on your playground, they're there because they're curious. They're some of the only ones who will step outside of their comfort zone and try. They're, they're trying. The only reason why they're watching this video is because they're trying to hear another side. That's it. They don't feel attacked by simply looking at the title. The title says McEnany. This is a total insult from um, Kamala Harris to Americans. Now, the way that that's written is, it's like it's to our base. We only want our base to um, see this. We only want our base to hear this. But some people on the other side might feel brave enough to step over and say, mm, I want to check this out too. I want to see what this is all about. And then when they do, be welcoming, all right? Be hospitable. Um, show them some hospitality and teach them.
show some give them some value something to take home give them a, give them some instead of giving them a pop quiz give them some homework you know what i mean that's it that's what people been doing for me and when you guys have been doing that for me it didn't make me run away it made me run to it and learn more and more and more and want to be a part of the the machine that makes sense because the other side made absolutely no sense whatsoever at any rate it's your turn i want to hear what you got to say about this in the comments below and if you have yet to hit that subscribe button please make sure you do so on your way out the door once again guys i'm van and now we are all the lfr family and i look forward to seeing you on the next video and hopefully inside the patreon as well y'all have been amazing per usual love y'all